some Tom Brown. <laughs> you gotta love this this movement. You know what I mean? Oh, what wow. is this? Wow. <laughs> Imagine this was you, Jay. <laughs> the album cover. Hi, my name is Jay Phelps, and this is Ear to the Ground, a documentary series showing a rare glimpse into the life of an artist. Come with me today in part two as we follow trumpeter and all-round brass man Jonathan Enser. We speak about his latest project, Matters Unknown, the process behind it, and what lies ahead of him in the future. I started writing music independently of any other sort of, sort of collaborative effort. Um, really just for myself and then eventually incorporating other people probably about four years ago off the back of running a brass band um, that was called Upslide Down and I started writing tunes for it and I realised that there wasn't necessarily a market for original brass band music in this country. Most of the brass bands are just in for a quick buck trying to play some pop covers um, and uh, kind of it's a bit of an appropriation station sort of situation. Hmm. Um, so when I started to write, I realised that the way to avoid that was to either do justice to the tradition, and playing proper New Orleans music, and then I started to realise that the instrumentation was something that really inspired me. Um, so I started writing for it. I didn't want to do a direct repetition, I didn't want it to be derivative. It was just music that had come to me. Um, and so for me, that was the really important thing is that music that I write is fundamental. It's like a earworm from its very gestation. I never really try and write the music. It has a semblance of probably just writing my day. Like the music that I write is usually a response to emotional situations I'm going through, physical situations I'm going through, or trying to make sense of the world. Um, and so that's why originally the plan was called Matters, which just defines all thoughts and all things, because it's a response to my sort of curiosity into animistic cultures, into folkloric practice, um, and into meditation and learning about my place in the world. Um, and so it's really helped me on that journey because now I just write music and it, it grounds me and helps me cry and helps me understand what it is that I need to do. Sometimes it just helps take my mind away from where all the things are going wrong in my life, um, which is a real tonic as anyone who writes music knows. If, you can get into a trance state and get out of your head and sometimes that's all you really need um, to give you a bit of space from your thoughts and your feelings and to be able to reground, rebalance and find more resonance back in the real world afterwards. So yeah, Matters Unknown is, the, is my project and that's why it exists, I think. It's a short summary of why it exists. It's a long process, but the music's now just getting released for the first time, really. Started releasing a couple of singles with the help of Eric Carsenti in 2021, 2021, and then now releasing on the New Soil label, um, which is a subsidiary of Marathon Group, um, based out of Tar Yard Studios in King's Cross, which is where this feels like a lot of the music industry in the UK is based. Really exciting place. Um, and yeah, it's been a really interesting experience releasing some of this music that I'm really, well, the reason that I'm releasing it is because I realised that what I wanted to do was be able to present it to the world and help heal, help give people a space to away from their thoughts because I realised that that's what live music does. And when I was denied that opportunity with COVID, um, I took it upon myself to try and work out how to find a platform that would be a good way of guiding this music towards as many people in a way that people would be able to digest it as best as possible. Before we continue, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to click the like button and subscribe to Ear to the Ground for future videos. Click on the bell to be notified and see you in the next video. Chronic pain, like if I see a challenge that I want to try and do, I'm going to suffer that pain for for trying to overcome, you know, and have the experience because you know my grandfather taught me when I was very young that life is all about experience, which basically gave me all, yes. all opportunities to do whatever I really wanted to do Oops. Um, from quite a young age. <laughs> um, but I also meant that I have no desire for like that many material possessions. I like to have a nice space where I can enjoy being in the space. And, you know, I like to have nice instruments that I can create nice atmospheres with. And I like to make nice sounds. I like to be around nice people. All of this is about the experience of life rather than about the material possessions and I'm really lucky to have had that lesson from quite a young age. Right. Oh, 
Oh, mate, Bobby Broom. This guitarist, this is so. Bobby Broom is one of Chicago's finest guitarists. This is when they tried to make him into a George Benson character. Mm. Killing, absolutely killing, um, with a broom. With the broom. Oh my god, I can't believe they're going to do a broom for Bobby Broom. <laughs> What's this that we're listening to now? We're listening to some Blackbirds. This is uh, the groups that Donald Byrd mentored um, from the university that he taught in um, and put together following his records doing with uh, in collaboration with the Meisel brothers. Is it Meisel? Meisel? Uh. Um, but yeah, killing, killing album this. The first, the A, the, actually the first track of the, of the B-side. Woo! It's um, Willow Harrison, Detroit's finest, Leon Ware, Shackleton, Lobo, Bunch of Broken Bean, Bunch of House, Acid Jazz. So you're just a music lover, huh? Yeah, this is all the, this is all the, like, the going for it stuff. This is my favorite, this is my personal favorite connection. Playing this when you came in. Ideas are all valid. Yeah, my next, I think it's, it is, it's kind of become what I thought about more often than not as what I will eventually be what I consider to be my purpose, I think. So the oldest flute that's ever been found is 60,000 years old. It was a Neathandal flute as well. It wasn't even uh, like Homo sapien, it was Neathandal man. This flute's 60,000 years old and it's found in one of the most beautiful resonant caves in um in bulgaria i think it is and it's the oldest instrument that's ever been found so it predates human language or society it predates everything and throughout time you see different musical generations coming up and finding a resonant space to play in um, so there's caves then enter christianity churches before christianity there was also all sorts of like religious music going on in sacred caves and spaces like that and now we're in this place where we as individuals are playing music for a social practice as a career, but at the, at the heart of it is there's something that I think that all musicians will could, could say is that what we do is fundamentally therapy, it's heals and it is commun it's communality. I wanna start up this night that's called Bliss, um, a prayer to communal resonance. And it's about people coming to a space and not being alcohol led, the room and the resonance of the space is something that's really in itself just uh, majestic and um, grounding because just the space will be will be a thing so i'm trying to find a space it will be this thing i think maybe it'll be end up being a tour of spaces and maybe the caves of the uk because there are all sorts of amazing caves in the uk that were used for religious practice by monks or by 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 ancient practitioners of um sort of paganism and stuff like that um, but bringing together a core of like different different musicians who play instruments that naturally evoke these senses. Um, harps, drones, voices, body percussion, and for it to invite people in to, to partake in it. So the barrier between the band, the ensemble, that they're more facilitators than they are actual musicians and separate to everyone else. So people can come and they can sing and they can use their body as percussion. And the reality for these spaces is once we get into these cycles and these cathartic trance states, rapture, you find yourself totally embodied by the music and you find yourself a resonance with the resonance of the space and with the resonance of the sounds that you're going through. So this is kind of where I want what I want to start working out how to facilitate. It's like this, but it not be a not for profit. In fact, for it to be for charity, because really like so it. so it's so clear to me that like as soon as you put a fee on these things, musicians have certain expectations yeah. and audience have certain expectations. <laughs> She's a chatty cat. She should do the rest of the interview. I think, yeah. <laughs> I think she got this. What are you saying, Frida? <laughs> uh, process of passing the music on to the next generation. Why is music important? It's because there was music before there was language. There was a beating drum and there was a song before there was a word. That's that to me rings true as the fundamental, as a, as a fundamental, something that goes beyond language or society, finance, capitalism, social movements, anything. Music is fundamental and to not acknowledge that 
and to not give that due respect and my diligence in my life would feel like I'm wasting my time. So for me, like the fact that it's my therapy, that I have to learn how to inspire both in the words that I use and how I define music, but also inspire through the practice of breathing. The Latin for, for breath is spire, to inspire is to give breath. Okay, so to, to give breath is to inspire with, with our instrument, with brass, you know, that's fundamental in what we do, that's to give life um, with music. This is a very good soundtrack for this as well. Um, I would argue that that's why music is important, is because there is music, and that there is music before there is anything else, but it also reflects everything that we need. Any social movement you see throughout time is reflected in the music that those people are making. Any social movement. You see it with civil rights in the US. You see it in every, every culture throughout time and history. is like the music serves the purpose of the people making it. To either give guidance to the community, to, you know, try and reach a new level in where the community can sort of flourish, or for me, for a holistic and therapeutic practice. This is the way I see it now. Um, for me, it's like how much healing can be done with music and I'm on my journey to finding out now, I feel like.